Egypt is a country of 80 million in which the United States is a major stakeholder. As a significant mediator of the U.S.-Israeli interests in the Middle East, the possessor of the strategic Suez Canal, and intelligence provider for the U.S. in its pursuit in eradicating terrorism, the state of Egypt is indispensable to the United States' interest. However, the country has struggled with a long history of lack of self-governance and its first venture into the realm of democracy ended with its first over with, with its overthrow of its first democratically elected president Mohamed Morsi as the american policymakers wonder why policy which policies they should pursue to help develop democracy in egypt it is important for them to examine the current state of the the middle eastern country in which the United States has invested billions, exploring the factors and obstacles that have hindered the development of a true democracy in Egypt, as well as the flaws in our current policy towards it. Considering economic, societal, and political factors in the response to the July 3rd overthrow of Morsi, the United States has, the United States should pursue policies that secure the rule of law in Egypt, as well as protect the basic rights of the Egyptian people. Egypt is a significant Middle Eastern regional power whose destiny is indirectly intertwined with that of the United States and its national security. One cannot diminish its role in achieving our international security and public safety goals, whether as a mediator for Egypt, for Israel in the Arab world, and aid in threats from countries such as Iran, a source of and a source of counterterrorism as a stakeholder in the Sinai crisis. Therefore, it ought to be a priority of the United States foreign policy to ensure to secure and further Egypt as an economic and national security ally by furthering democratic development in the Middle Eastern power, Middle Eastern power. Any alternative for a country with a population and military as powerful as Egypt's can lead to disasters beyond Egyptian borders if it ever became a failed state. Moreover, given Egypt's relative ideological and religious diversity, a successful experiment in inclusive democracy can have lots of benefits, as Egypt has the potential to serve as a great model for democracy to other conflicted nations. On July 3rd, 2013, the world was alarmed as Egypt's first democratically elected president was overthrown by the army. After enduring a long history of subjects to ancient and modern imperialists, a self-appointed military leader, Gamal Abdel Nasser, and appointed successor, Anwar Sadat and Hosni Mubarak. The Egyptian people could not even complete a year under an elected executive. Yet one ought to be surprised at this unfortunate fact. Challenges to Egyptian demo democratic maturity include not only the lack of Egyptian experience in democracy, but also severe political polarization and an inability to reach an ideological consensus between Islam Is Islamists and liberals. Indeed, a shadow of Egypt's autocratic past is the lack of party diversity in the post mubarak era as egyptians are forced to resort to a more organized party the muslim brotherhood considering the anti-israeli and anti-american sentiments of a large portion of the muslim brotherhood's base it is imperative that the united states works together greater political competition in egypt and greater political competition in Egypt. The sharp decline of Egyptian optimism for from 64% believing in the positive uh, progresses after Mubarak's ouster uh, to 45% after Morsi's elections portray the failed practical policies of the Muslim Brotherhood, thereby demon demonstrating the lack of political options for the Egyptian people. Unfortunately, the United States' interest, according to a study conducted between October and November of 2012, 90, er, excuse me, 
69% of Egyptians stated the meaning of basic necessities for survival and economic equality as opposed to ideal ideology as the top priority for the nation, thereby giving the United States direction towards a type of policies and enticements that should be persuade to win over the Egyptian people to democracy. According to a Congressional Research Service report, Egypt is the second largest, largest recipient of U.S. bilateral foreign aid, having acquired $71.6 billion between the years of 1979 and 2011. United States leverage in Egypt is demonstrated by the extent to which the Egypt depended upon American aid for decades, as demonstrated uh, as demonstrated in the previous note. One ought to note that the gradual change in the composition from U.S. foreign assistance to Egypt throughout the years as economic aid has become a mere fraction of the military aid in 2012. In other words, for the sake of maintaining stability in Egypt's current U.S. policy favors, strengthening and the already powerful military in of Egypt rather than revealing or excuse me relieving the dire economic conditions that has led to a current poverty level of 50 percent in fact according to a September 20 to September 2003rd bookings policy briefing on an Egypt on Egyptian affairs Middle Eastern such as Middle Eastern states such as Egypt are strategically vital and economic interests take precedence over human rights and democracy. Such priorities therefore explain the deficiency in aid geared towards addressing human rights as Egypt and strengthening the rule of law. However, recently the United States has acted in cogniz with cognizance of Egypt's human rights issues by deciding to reduce the aid in light of the military's poor performance and persecution of Muslim Brotherhood members. While the United States still gr guarantees support in managing counterterrorism, the policies issues, the, pol the policing issues in regions such as the Sinai Peninsula, this Sinai Peninsula, this decisive measure led to Egypt's foreign minister to describe his country's relationship with the United States as being a mere as being in a state of turmoil. Finally, perhaps the most glaring action or inaction taken by the United States in its, in its little support in helping Egypt acquire IMF aid, Egypt has struggled to secure IMF assistance to alleviate its poor economic conditions and rebuild its credit. And its overthrow of its first democratically elected president, Mohamed Morsi certainly doesn't help certainly doesn't help. However, the United States not only has the resources to develop the country economically as opposed to militarily, but also possesses the clout to help Egypt secure as much as fifteen billion in IMF aid. Given the astonishing poverty rate of Egypt, about 50%, any increase in international aid or investment would help alleviate one of Egypt's primary crises, crises its, econ its economy. Also, with increased economic inv investment and aid, Egypt is more likely to develop a more robust middle class, which often leads to democracy. On the other hand, given the instable current state of Egypt, as property protections are not secure, endangering businesses also, endangering businesses also relying on the development of the middle class to establish democracy is a slow process. Cutting the U.S. military and economic aid would hasten the country's formal ele election process, as the military would not risk would risk not losing only a significant resource on which it has developed depended on for three for over three decades but would also a 
symbol of the world's greatest superpower as support. By cutting aid in the United States would be upholding its humanistic values given that li literally hundreds of people have died since Morsi's ouster. As a result of vi violence with, mili with the military, however, such a decisive measure would cause much of the U.S. leverage on Egypt to cease. Even if the elections were, call were called, any constitution or de democratic structure would arise from such form of U.S. pressure that would yet to be in institutionalized. Also, some countries such as Saudi Arabia and perhaps even Russia would replace whatever aid was revoked, thereby leading the complications in U.S. relations to those nations. Given the current state of Egypt's economic political structure, constitutional progress, and law enforcement challenges, the most vi viable option for the United States to pursue is the third, to refocus resources and and objectives to assist Egypt in securing the rule of law and maintaining adequate human rights standards. Suicide bombs in the Sinai Peninsula targeting of the government officials and numerous assassination attempts persists, highlighting the inadequacy of, the, of Egypt's law enforcement capabilities. The United States Bureau of Democracy, Human Rights, and Labor uh, give such examples meanwhile sectarian violence continues as a result of attacks on egypt's religious minority of coptic christians currently the coptic christians uh, endure government discrimination and scrutiny as the counter legal barriers to practice their religion such as requiring a presidential permits uh, to build or renovate churches and stricter sentencing practices compared to those imposed by imposed upon by their mil, their muslim counterparts however government inaction and lenient prosecution of those who act christian people who attack christian people and pro property maintain uh sectarian violence such poor display of law enforcement inevitably leads to christian victims to seek retaliation, thereby escalating the violence. While economic development and aid is essential in providing, in improving the stabilizing, stabilizing Egypt's conditions for democracy, the lack of law enforcement and human rights protections discourage investment by both states and provide business and business as weak as the rule of law equates to little property rights and protection. Also, while America can coerce the military to initiating an electoral pro process, a weak constitutional and weak, weak constitution and enforcement of its law of its laws will not guarantee that electoral outcomes will be obeyed will be obeyed. The rule of law must manifest itself so that any demo democratic process can be legitimized in the eyes of the Egyptian people. The United States must direct its energy to creating an Egypt where dem democratic institutions are strong enough to be viewed with the same scrutiny, the same sanctity as the military so that elected leaders are not simply overthrown in an impulsive fashion. This can only occur by strengthening the rule of law. Also, human rights must be protected to minimize civil and sectarian strife. Stabilization, or excuse me, establishing a will in the public to abide by those who both create and enforce the country's law Without such, no de democratic institution can ever rise to the same level as the military in terms of power and democracy cannot take hold.